appreciate it. I want to go now to Avi Melamed, founder of the Inside the Middle East Institute. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying, quote, we are at war. The symbolism of the, the timing here, 50 years pretty much to the day of the Yom Kippur War in 1973. Yes, Kim, thank you for having me. You are correct. In many ways, there is a similarity between these uh, two events. By the way, this is not the only similarity. There are other aspects that are um, kind of like a common denominator when you think about those two different events, even though they happened uh, 50 years one from the other. With your permission, I, I, I would like to provide a couple of um, observations or insights, notes, trying to put this whole current situation in a wider perspective. First, from a military perspective, I would say we are looking at something that obviously a war that plan that was um, orchestrated and organized and planned for a long period of time. And of course, the biggest question in that perspective is, uh, is this war is a first phase towards a multi-front war, particularly when we are talking about the story of Hezbollah in Lebanon. All eyes also have to be very closely on Lebanon. In that regard, I would like to add a strategic dimension. We have to think about the Iranian hegemonic uh, vision plan. And as part of the Iranian hegemonic vision plan, in which Hamas and Islamic Jihad plays a very significant role, the Iranians are trying to establish what we call the ring of fire, namely surrounding Israel from three different arenas, Lebanon, Syria, and Gaza Strip, with militants and proxies that are supposed to attack simultaneously the state of Israel. What we saw this morning is that one of those arena, Gaza Strip, was activated. Obviously, the biggest question to follow in the next couple of days, are we going to see the flare up of the Lebanese arena and maybe the Syrian arena? And in addition to that, of course, the issue of the Palestinian territories in the West Bank and uh, areas within Israel populated by mixed population Jews and Israeli Arabs. This yeah. is one that insight that I want to share. That, that's certainly one of the questions, a question I want to ask you, and, and Hadass raised that, uh, our reporter there. I mean, I Israeli authorities seem to have been really caught by surprise here. You're a former Israeli intelligence official. Uh, this seems to represent a, a huge intelligence failure. Definitely. Look, I mean, at this point, even though we are in a very preliminary stage, it's very clear that Israel's major, uh, I would say, strategy in the context of de defending this uh, volatile area surrounding Gaza, that strategy basically failed. And what we see right now is the uh, manifestation or materialization of Israel's worst uh, scenario where uh, militants are actually taking over parts of communities and, and civilians in the area of Gaza Strip. So in that sense, definitely, and as I said before, there are many other aspects that have to be um, uh, asked in that regard. Mm -hmm. But with your permission, Kim, I would like to go back and provide additional uh, insights and observations. So I was talking about the military perspective and the Iranian master plan of the Ring of Fire. There is another interesting perspective, and that goes to the question, why did Hamas exactly launch that war? I think that we have to look at it in different, different aspects. One of them is the fact that Hamas has been struggling for an ongoing period of time, and it's been accumulative of criticism of people in Gaza Strip over Hamas way. In the last couple of months, there has been some relief because Israel enabled more and more people from Gaza Strip to go and to work in Israel. So this is one interesting aspect. The other interesting aspect has to be viewed in the context of the power struggle between Hamas on the one hand and Palestinian Authority on the other hand. Hamas votes to be the leader of the Palestinian. And as part of it, ideology, Hamas votes the military action. Basically says the only way to bring Israel down is through military use of power. And in that sense, Hamas basically is, from its perspective, basically say or do what he always say, hopefully, Hamas basically hope that that will gain him a credit within the uh, Palestinian uh, 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 public opinion and so on. And there is another interesting aspect regarding that question, why did Hamas wage that war? And that has to be looked in the context of the normalization and particularly the recent talks between Israel and Saudi Arabia and the reports about a brewing sort of like peace agreement or agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now I'm taking it to the Palestinian perspective. And in the Palestinian arena, there is a growing discontent because the Palestinians are feeling that the Arab world, their brothers are abandoning them. 
And basically, the Palestinian says, Saudi Arabia is the last one to defend us. If the Saudis are also going to join the process with Israel, it means that we, the Palestinians, we have been totally thrown under the bus. What Hamas likely did in this act is actually sending a message to the region, basically saying the Palestinians are not going to be excluded. The Palestinians have a say, and they have ability to impact the trajectory of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and no one could ignore that role. Yeah. So I think these are a couple of things also to look at when we ask ourselves, why did Hamas wage that war? Because it is a war. And particularly when you look at the most significant question at this point regarding that, and that is, of course, what is going to be Israel's response? Yeah, is let, me, let, me, going to... let me ask you about that, because that, that's exactly where I want to go. I appreciate uh, your, your perspective on, on uh, the interpretation of the uh, uh, Hamas's, uh, you know, uh, motives here. But I want to ask you about Israel's uh, response. Israel's security cabinet just meeting, I think, in, in an hour or so. What are the options, do you think, in terms of their response? And how might that be complicated if Israelis, as, as we uh, are hearing reports, uh, have been captured? Well, Kim, Israel is currently in a major, major dilemma. Uh, on the one hand, we got a government in Israel reminding you large part of this government or the vocal parts of this government are coming from the uh, more um, extreme right-wing factors. They clearly put a pressure on the Israeli government to, um, uh, you know, to take over Gaza Strip and to reoccupy Gaza Strip. Um, and and def definitely they will push towards that direction. The question is, of course, what will be the other state, what are the other positions of other parts of the Israeli government and the Israeli security and intelligence community? Look, we are looking at a pivotal moment because Israel, after this war, following the initiation of this war by Hamas, it cannot really go back to the old same story of the military rounds because as of now, Hamas won its biggest strategic um, um, uh, achievement ever. He basically was able to screen a picture when he was taking. Uh, control over Israeli communities, apparently taking control of or, 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 or holding some Israelis as, as hostages. Now, that goes back to the Israeli government. And one of the things that we have to ask ourselves, is Israel going to launch a massive military operation, actually basically taking that specific situation as a point where Israel is now actively changing the reality that was formed in Gaza Strip since 2007, when Hamas uh, took over Gaza Strip since 2007. I would not exclude that uh, a, a scenario. Mm. It's very possible uh, that we will witness, witness a massive Israeli ground operation in Gaza Strip that basically will aim to try and to change totally from the ground the conditions that have been prevailed uh, for the last almost uh, two decades. This yeah. is a pivotal moment, as I said before. We have to look and see what will be the scale and the volume of Israeli retaliation and response. We have to look whether it's going to evolve in uh, uh, expanding of this war to another arenas. We are looking at critical hours, critical days, definitely. This story has regional ramifications, not only domestic ones. Yeah, absolutely true. Listen, we are out of time, but appreciate your analysis, Avi Melamed. Thank you so much.